and uh, there will be a little winding mechanism going up through. So let's make one of those really quick. So we don't need this anymore. And we'll go ahead and make this a little bit more. Um, so let's see. We can do, I'm going to do an inset flat island. And then we'll do, make sure region's turned on. And then we can just go ahead and pull this in. And then we'll just do a Q mesh polygroup all. And we'll pull this back. And then we'll just do a crease tolerance here, dynamic. And now we can kind of put like a little thing in there. Now, if we, we know we want the diameter to be about that size. What I'm going to do is just um, Q mesh polygroup all. I'm going to pull this out, hold down control. That'll pop out a copy. And then I've already got, let's do polygroup island here. So we can pop this thing out here. And now we've already got this one that can go inside of that one. So we'll just go ahead and isolate that. We'll split hidden. Let's do a quick save real quick. And then we'll go into uh, this thing. Uh, I don't have a preferred rendering engine. And just like anything else, I, I use everything. Uh, I use Keyshot a lot just because it's convenient and I'm all about convenience. Uh, if it's one button solution like ZBrush to Keyshot, boom, count me in. I use Octane a lot. Uh, V-Ray I've used a bit. Redshift I've used a bit. Uh, Mental Ray I used to use. I'm not a huge fan of it just because it's, I don't know, I guess I'm not smart enough for it. Same thing with uh, RenderMan. My, my brains aren't big enough to use those programs, but I know a lot of people get a lot of good results out of them. I'm not one of them, but I do like the, the, the red shift, the octanes, the key shots, because I can kind of make lighting changes and material changes on the fly. And I don't have to sit there and go render region doot, 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 and wait for it to finish. I did that all through college. Not a big, not a big fan. Um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. That pipe cap definitely should have, um, <laughs> That's a good point. Like one of those old gas, one of those old gas uh, squeeze handle things. I should probably make one of those anyways. That can be one of the weapons. I need to write all this down. You guys are kind of a good ideas. Let me see. Uh, bu -bu -bu, where's my list here? Let's write it down here. So we need a gas handle. And I need to model a little butterfly wind up thing here. So let's give that a shot. So if I have this thing here, now this is going to be the diameter here. Did we reload this? Let's go Q, yeah, quick save, reload. Um, so if you have something, so, oh, when you're alt, alt tagging, uh, how do you deselect? That's a good question. I wanna say, if you alt tag over them again, it'll just change the poly group. So that's kind of one way. And it's also kind of an easy way to go ahead and you know, change polygroups. Uh, let's see, mirror and weld. There we go. And kind of do that. But um, that's the only way I can think of. I'm not or, or undoing, but uh, yeah. So quick select with Alt. You press Alt and re-click. So Alt and A. If you Alt and re-click, it'll change the polygroup. Um, but I mean, the cool thing about ZBrush is the polygroups are pretty easy to get back. You can do group by normals. And then I'll get that stuff back. And you don't even need polygroups with ZModeler. You can just do like flat surface or whatever. But um, I love polygroups. Polygroups is one of my favorite things about ZBrush modeling versus selection sets and all that other garbage you have in other 3D programs that are really difficult and not visual at all. Um, so anyway, we were dragging this thing out. QMesh Polygroup Island, where it's going to hold down Shift and pull that out. So now that's going to go straight into uh, this little thing back here. So what's the fastest way to do something like this? we got two things and you know, when you're in doubt, sometimes, sometimes it's, uh, you know, and I could sit here and like Z modeler and like bridge stuff. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes, just sometimes you can go to polyplane 3d and you can go into, this is when I get real lazy. We're going to go to, uh, make poly mesh 3d, turn on, uh, turn off smooth, hit divide. Jeez. Come on, Mike. Hit divide a couple times. I'm going to turn on X symmetry here. And we're going to go ahead and do a clip circle here. And we're going to over, whoops, not a clip, a slice circle. And we're going to overlap those a bit. Let's go ahead and do a mirror, mirror and weld. So now those are put together. And then we can do another slice circle center to where we want to, you know, have those go like this. And again, mirror, mirror, and weld. And then we can go through here 
It looks like it just kind of comes out this way, so let's do a quick slice. Slice curve here, and we'll just kind of do this. And then again, mirror, mirror, well. So now I take what I want from this. So we'll take this piece, and this piece, and this piece. And uh, actually, let's do this piece here, and we'll do an auto groups. Now we'll do this one we like, this one we like, this one we like, and the rest of it can go to hell. And now we've got this, and now we can just use the remesher. Let's go ahead and trim this thing up. Let's go slice curve here. We'll just take, yeah, that kind of gets pinched down into the cylinder. So we'll take all this up here, go delete hidden, and then we'll go to the remesher half, depth of size down to zero, and we'll let the remesher do the heavy lifting for me. Simplify these shapes for me. Thank you very much. Um, looks like through here we need to weld. So I'm going to go ahead and do a stitch two points here and here. Let's kind of weld those together. Let's do a quick mirror and weld. Here. Oh, yeah, it's got a little piece sticking out. We'll grab that little thing. Delete hidden. And now let's stitch those two points together. Come on, zero measure. Don't make a liar out of me. You were supposed to be easy. Uh, let's see. Everything else is fine. Got exactly what I needed, except for this little bastard. Delete hidden. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we got these basic shapes here. And let's, let's go ahead and stitch these two. So I'm going to stitch these two points here. Oh, that's what the problem is. Let's turn off X. Let's go ahead and do a quick mirror and weld, and now we can go ahead and do a collapse edge. Clean this up a little bit. Mirror and weld, there we go. Kind of even this out just a bit. Okay, so now if we want thickness through here, we can do Q mesh, polygroup all. Let's pull this back, and then we'll go ahead and flip those. And now I've got that going for us, which is nice. And I think that'll go ahead and fit. So if I want to, I can make a brush out of this. Uh, I'm going to drag it right onto my cylinder like this. I'm going to go to Brush, Creal. It'll probably be more like this, actually. So we'll go to Brush, Create Insert Mesh, New. And we'll go ahead and go back to our model here. We'll go to the back. And we will just drag that right on out. Ta-da. And then we'll go to Split Mass Points. And then there we go. Um, see what I miss. Uh, da, 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 da. So yes, Axel, I'm gonna write those down too. So we got uh, tracks instead of legs and a chainsaw. Yep. Okay. So what I'm doing is doing a bunch of different types of robots. So as I make variations of these, I'll try and uh, and, and do some of this stuff too. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, Mal Malchior, <laughs> I'm used to saying that. Um, yeah, it's like a vertex groove. It's like a selection set in Maya, only it's visual and you can change them on the fly and you can do it by surfaces and it's great. Um, the reference menu is Z, the spotlight is comma. Oh yeah, so spotlight is a Z and shift D to turn that off. And then uh, the comma key brings up light box, which is all your kind of stuff in here that we go through. Did I miss a question here? Uh, sorry, and again, I apologize if I miss any questions. I'm kind of trying to keep an eye, and I usually, uh, oh, there it is. How do you open that quick menu? Um, oh, this thing right here, my custom menu, um, that is a, oh, let me, I can show you exactly how I did that. Check this out. So if you go to this playlist right here, that is my intro to ZBrush part two on my YouTube channel. That takes you through custom hotkeys, custom interface, custom menu. Basically all it is, is this custom menu I made in ZBrush. You just go over here to preferences, uh, custom UI, go to config, turn on uh, enable customize, turn on custom UI, open that up and just make a quick custom menu with all the stuff broken up how you want. And then you can do control alt tap any menu item or any item in ZBrush really, then assign a hotkey to it. And then I just assign that to alt A and then I'm off to the races. In fact, if you're so inclined, if you go here to my Gumroad page and you go all the way to the bottom and you go to where it says Intro to ZBrush Files, you can download my custom menu. Uh, I've changed it since then. 
but it's basically the same thing. And it's super easy to make your own. The only reason I put that up is because people were asking for it over and over again. So I was like, you know what? You can have it. Have at it. Uh, but I don't know how useful it'll be. Uh, had a copy of Polygroup of Z Modeler. Yeah. So that we yeah we yeah when we pulled this little this little piece off here, um, that's also super useful for um, just doing stuff. Yeah. So we can do Q Mesh Polygroup all. If we do Q Mesh, it'll add an edge ring, which is useful. If we do Q Mesh, we hold down Shift, it'll pull along the surface normal. And if we do Q Mesh and Control, it'll pop off a copy. So you can just really quickly. Oops. Uh, and then, of course, you probably want to change it to Polygroup Island because Polygroup All is going to get both of those polygroups here. So you can pull these off and make a bunch of different copies here, like so. And if QMesh ever acts weird, like if you want to pull up and it's not doing it and it's just not doing an operation, just go to Modify, <coughs> excuse me, Geometry Modify Topology Delete Hidden. And that'll usually get rid of any, because if, if there's any hidden geometry, like if I go here, let's go ahead and quick save in case it crashes. So if you got hidden geometry and you're trying to do like, let me Q-mesh this island, it's just like, uh, it's not gonna let me. Just go delete hidden and then like, oh shoot, I can now. So sometimes it'll bring back gremlin geometry. You don't even know about it. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, people using the word polys tries in context with poly count. Is that the same or how am I supposed to find out how many polys my model is in ZBrush? Um, so the polygon count in ZBrush, you can go up here to your active points, and this is going to show you how many active points you have for your poly count. It's probably safest just go into your subtool menu and roll over it, and that'll show you this thing is 36 polygons. So let's see, because in Maya, you have a quad count when your heads up display, and then you have a triangle count. So every quad here is made up of triangles. So when you go into engine, usually when people say, what's your poly count, that's your triangle count. So your quad, your face count, your quads, your four-sided meshes could be a thousand, but your triangles are going to be 2000 because every face is going to be broken up into two triangles here. So in this case here, um, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 36. Yeah. So it's actually giving you um, a polygon count, which is technically correct. It's not giving you a triangle count. The triangle count on this thing would be higher because every single one of these four sided faces, four sided polygons, is going to be two triangles. So sorry for the weird answer or the difficult answer, maybe. But technically, your poly count, your safest in ZBrush, is going to be this one here. 36 polys. However, your triangle count is going to be slightly higher because, you know, these are here are triangles, but every single one of these four-sided faces is also going to be two triangles each. So usually people ask you for the try count when you're talking about like going into engine and staying under a certain amount for perf reasons. So, okay, where do we leave off? So this thing gets attached to this thing. Uh, it kind of looks like it gets crimped. Yeah, okay, so it goes from flat to round. This will be, actually, this will be perfect for, um, let's go ahead and delete this, and let's go back to our brush here. And just to make this easier on me, I'm gonna take this, isolate that, invert it, and that's just a screen error. And we're going to go to delete hidden and we're going to make this an open hole. So if I want to do two versions, I can go to my insert mesh here and I can go to brush, select it, and then create insert mesh, append. Okay. And then we'll go back here. And now when I want to go to inserting that mesh, I can go here. here. Now, if I was smart, I would have done, if I hit M, you're going to see I have two versions. If I was smart, I would have labeled this one, whatever, wind up, whatever. And then this one, I would what I would have named it wind up with hole because I can't see the other side. But since we just made it, I think we're safe. So now, now that I've done that, I have Dynamesh turned off. I'm gonna drag that out onto that poly group here. And let's go ahead. Ooh, you know what? This has one, this might have one too many poly groups. Let's see if this works. And it's funny is I don't use this, um, this technique very often, but oh yeah, it worked just fine. So it went ahead and just sewed those edges up for me. Don't even need to go and do anything crazy. So we'll go ahead and just shove that right back in here, however far you need to. And then we can do a quick, let's just do a quick crease, or uh, we'll do a 
group by normals just so I can see visually the different groups. And now I know it's safe to go ahead and just do an uncrease all and then crease polygroup. That's also under your polygroup menu. And then when I hit D, you'll see it kind of gives me nice creased edges on that thing. So, and that can actually be an add-on. That can be a little, little downloadable thing if we want. Let's go ahead and scale this up just a tiny bit so it'll fit that just a little bit better here. Alrighty.